Do we have a special project for you? The Carey Brothers and team are undertaking the renovation of 604 2nd Street, a 100-plus year old kit-style bungalow home located in charming Old Town Brentwood in the San Francisco Bay Area. 604 is in dire straits and in need of repair and full renovation inside and out. Outside will repair the foundation, replace porches and railings, install new roofing, wrap the home with new siding and trim, install new energy efficient windows, and give it a fresh coat of paint. And that's only the beginning. Inside, we'll install new flooring, doors, trim, cabinets, counters, appliances, bathroom fixtures and accessories, and more all with an eye on maintaining 604's architectural integrity. We'll be repurposing original materials where we can and at the same time add comfort, efficiency, and value. We're also giving the owners a little bit more elbow room with a new master bedroom and bath and walk-in closet. So two bedrooms and one bath will become a spacious three-bed, two-bath home. Out back, we'll be replacing the old one-car garage with a new three-car garage and workshop where the owner will live out his passion for restoring vintage automobiles. So join us as we take you on our adventure to restore and preserve this unique historic property. All along the way, we'll be sharing tips on products and techniques that we hope will inspire you. Well, hey, I'm James. Hey, and I'm Morris. And this is On The House. Okay, since we were last together, the interior wall framing, which is the skeleton of the walls, has been completed for all the uh, innovations and uh, remodeling that we had planned to do. Uh, if you look up above me, you'll see that we're adding framing members, horizontal framing members above called ceiling joist. These members will hold the sheetrock that uh, makes up the ceiling. And as you might note, there are quite a few of them. And I want to show you what they used to look like before all of these members went in. Come on to the back room. There's an old saying, they don't build them like they used to. And the truth is, they don't. The wood that we use today isn't nearly as good as the products that were used 100 years ago, over 100 years ago when this house was built. You'll notice... With these members, the distance between them is about four feet. And that's okay if you're using wood fence boards, but we'll be using drywall. So we'll want our framing members at least, or no more than two feet apart. And in our case, we're gonna be putting our ceiling joist 16 inches apart, which is much stronger and much smoother than any of the other spacings. When we're talking about wall framing, we want our studs at 16 inches on center because that's what gives us the support we need to hold our ceiling joist and our roof framing. So it's important that 16 inch center be maintained. Well, what are you gonna do when you have a door opening? We have a door opening here that's twice 16 inches or 32 inches. So what we've done is we've added two supports and a 
a beam called a header, and this header holds the roof up so that we can put a door opening and not worry about the door sagging. Isn't that interesting? You'll also notice that it's a little darker in here than it was the last time we visited, and that's because the windows are all covered with plywood. And that's because we've removed all of the windows from the structure, preparing for the new windows. And it's very difficult to see, but if you look over here, this window opening has a brand new header. None of the openings in this house had headers. I have no idea how the wood held for 111 years, but I have to tell you, we're not going back without putting headers at every single opening interior and exterior. <laughs> when I'm saying the windows have been removed, there's a shot of the windows and the new framing. If you'll notice right here at the roof line, you'll see where the roof pitches downward at an angle over this window. Inside, that is an angled ceiling that comes down lower than the rest of the room. We intend on removing this wall and removing this section of roof and building the walls so they match the height of the rest of the interior of the home. This overhang, which is intended to be completely rebuilt and built into the new roof system. The roof system in the back here will look quite a bit different than it currently does. These doors are a heartbreak for me because I remember these in the house that I was raised in that was built about the same decade. I think uh, this house was built in the early 1900s and the house I was raised in was built in 1911 or 1910 and then remodeled in 1911. And we had these French doors everywhere. And I, it, this brings back such memories, but they're terribly, terribly expensive. This will be one, uh, one move away from the uh, antiquity of the house, it will end up be becoming a sliding uh, patio door. Uh, and that was strictly a budget consideration and nothing else. That was really excellent. Yeah. That was fun. I loved it. But this trickling water brings me to a subject <laughs> that's going to require a brief break. Uh, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Uh, uh, well, then maybe we better get some plumbing done. I think so. <laughs> See you later. Okay. After demolition, we got to take a close look at the guts of this century old home. To describe the plumbing as sparse would be an understatement. It had mostly iron pipe with only one usable vent. Keep in mind that most modern homes have at least three vents. And we found that over the years, this home had accumulated a potpourri of plumbing materials, including a plastic hose. So we're redoing all the plumbing with copper pipe and ABS sewer lines to ensure reliable water where needed, along with consistent water pressure so the whole plumbing system is energy efficient low flow, and up to code. But take a look at what Brother Morris has found. It appears as though someone had a laundry out here because this is a P-trap and a drain, and I would say that there was a washer connected to it at one time. It would drain down here, there'd be the P-trap, and then it would go into the sewer system here. And if you'll notice, there's hot and cold water here as well. So this looks like an old exterior laundry connection that probably was used in the 20s. <laughs> it's a big day at 6.04. We're pouring concrete today for the garage and the house. Right now, the forms are being poured. And if you look, you'll see a crew of about 10 people forcing around the hose, pouring concrete, 
vibrating it, taking out the wire that holds the steel up and placing it inside the wet concrete. The steel will stay in place, the wire will be gone, and as we get each foot poured, all the centering stakes come out and the job starts to look a little bit more like a floor rather than a bunch of stakes and pins and wires. This is a great, great foundation. It was compacted. Steel is put in at two feet on center each way, placed on top little concrete spacers known as dobies to keep the steel in the center of the pour. This is a good, strong foundation and it'll be trowel finished. If you look over here, we have a pipe going down into the concrete. That will carry electrical out of the garage and into the house. You'll notice that right here under the hose, there's a little piece of two by four mud fill. That's where the man door is gonna go and that's gonna be in the foundation permanently to hold the door threshold when we install the door. And boy, I tell you, we worked for four days on this like animals. It was the most fun part of this project so far. I cannot wait to see the slab. Wow, really worked up a sweat on that one. We sure did. What's next? Oh, how about a little electrical work? <laughs> the electrical needs of today's homes differ a bit from what they were back in 1906. <laughs> you bet. Our reliance on appliances and electronics means that we're going to need more outlets and all new wiring. All that was put into the original plans drawn up for this renovation. But between the time the contract was signed and the permits were issued, the building codes for electrical had changed. Yikes, that means more work than expected, greater expense than planned for, and it certainly puts a crimp into our project schedule. You know, changes will come up in every project. You just gotta be flexible and ready to adjust when necessary. Pretty interesting way of getting around a corner, huh? Yeah. Wow. Now that is a solid subfloor. No squeaks, no complaints from the homeowner. It's not going anywhere. And here's a tip for you. Don't just lay your plywood subfloor on your floor joist, throw some nails down and walk away. We suggest using the highest quality construction adhesive that you can find and that you simply pump the adhesive right onto the top of the floor joist. And don't be greedy. Make sure you've got plenty of subfloor adhesive, okay? So that when you lay, your subfloor down, it will marry to the top of your floor joist, and then we use screws. And I have to tell you that again, we don't take shortcuts on the screws. Take a look at the spacing. Looks like about every six to eight inches, six inches on the um, edges and about eight inches or so in the field, a great bond. That subfloor won't squeak and it'll stay in place, well, hopefully for another 111 years. As we found after demolition, this home had beautiful wood flooring, but time had not been kind and the floor was buckled, rotted in many locations, and the floor structure was uneven throughout the entire home. So that meant going under the house to put in new piers and level the floor to give the bungalow a stronger foundation than ever before. You've got a really great look at all of the new interior piers that we poured with steel. They're embedded into the soil. We dug the holes, we put steel in them, we filled them with concrete, 
we elevated the gear and now we have good solid underpinning that when completed will be positively connected not only to the concrete pier but to the floor framing above. Here in the master suite there are two different kinds of insulation used. One for the exterior wall which you just looked at and another for the interior wall which you're looking at now. And if you look at them both again by going to the corner of the bedroom, you'll see that the insulation on the interior wall and the insulation next to the window on the exterior wall look exactly the same. The difference is that the exterior wall insulation is thermo and it, uh, excuse me, thermal, and it is made by Roxel and they call this comfort bat insulation. Now if you look at this identical insulation on the interior wall that's called safe and sound also made by Roxel and it's acoustic. So we have thermal insulation and we have acoustic insulation in the same room. The interior walls of the master bedroom are cordoned off from the rest of the house with safe and sound acoustic insulation. All of the exterior walls are protected with comfort bat thermal insulation, both by Roxel. When it comes to heat, the physical science is hot moves to cold. In the winter, the insulation keeps the heat from escaping. In the summer, the insulation keeps the heat from entering. It's never about the cold, it's always about the heat. Everyone thinks that heat rises. Actually, in the winter time, when the attic is freezing cold, air heads straight for that point, and that's upward. The wide tape around all new windows and exterior doors is called window and door flashing, and it's designed to prevent leaks. You may have noticed the yellow wrapping paper all around the house. It's a waterproofing and moisture barrier to prevent water intrusion, which could cause rot to the framing below. Unfortunately, the home's exterior siding had become a patchwork from numerous repairs and alterations over the years plus extensive rot, pest damage, and the need for earthquake retrofitting and waterproofing upgrades necessitated removal of the original material. This is Better simple. See it all when it's done. This is not where yeah. it's going to look nice. This right. is not where it's going to look the best because the walls are too big and there isn't enough detail on the walls. It's a garage. Yep, yep. But when we start doing this, yes. and all the corners start coming into play, yeah. and the myriad of windows, and oh, yeah. all the trim, it will really start to start to grow. The beauty of the product is it looks and fastens like wood. So if you want to maintain that historical look, if you do want to put a face nail on the product or fasten close to the edge, you can still do that. Paint over the top of it and you're going to have a siding product that looks just like the wood that was removed from the house or the wood that was installed originally a hundred years ago. From the ground up, we've taken great pains to stay historically and aesthetically true while modernizing this turn of the century home. Part of our success with the project can be attributed to our selection of a GAF roofing system. The homeowners, Mike and Robin McClellan, were very concerned about maintaining the charm of their old home and the GAF timberline shingles helped us meet their expectations. Uh, it's, it's easy to install, easy to lay. Um, the guys love it. It's, it's white, so the heat's not blowing back in your face, and uh, it just makes it easier to, to, to stay on the roof longer to apply the shingle. So uh, part, of, part of the deal here is um, make sure you get uh, five to six nails per shingle on the line where you're supposed to nail, so you catch the two-ply, and 
if you do that, then uh, it's, it's a great job. Um, this roof should last forever. Plenty more to do and more tips just for you on the house. For the closets in this renovation, we wanted to optimize the space, and that's why we went with the closet organization system. Our project manager, Matt, is installing a system by organized living into this closet. Even in a small closet, an organizing system allows you to easily access everything, have space for all your items, move the shelving around to fit your needs, and keep it all tidy. Okay, let's check out how things are going in the garage. Now that the foundations have been finished, the framing, the walls, and the roof trusses can go up quickly. About the biggest home improvement for the smallest amount of dollars you could do is with the garage door. Um, you got the largest amount of square footage for the least amount of money. Uh, garage doors, if you take an old standard garage door, replace it with something new uh, with a modern look, it's going to upgrade the house exponentially. It does two things. One, it provides safety. Uh, garage door has over 40 moving parts on it, so if it's not maintained or taken care of yearly, uh, the garage door lifespan goes from about 25 years to 10 to 15. Um, the other thing is, is the curb appeal. I mean, you upgrade doors, you go with something that has a good solid look, it's going to change the whole entire look of your house. The work continues on this historic renovation. And you can catch every moment of it by visiting our websites. It's onthehouse.com and carrybrospros.com. Take a look at the new cabinets. These came from FX Cabinets Warehouse. Not only do they enhance the style and period of the home, they're going to be such a pleasure for Mike and Robin to use. Hey, look at what's just arriving. These granite countertops are getting installed throughout the house. The granite fabricator took really careful measurements and pre-assembled the counters and cut out the holes for the sinks. Now it's time for the professional install. A particular challenge was the installation of the product around this farmhouse sink, which is also another element that is authentic to the era of the home. And you can see how on site they've created an edge here, an edge detail, so that the slab marries to the sink just beautifully. You don't even need to caulk it, although I'm certain that the fabricator and installer will install a bead of caulk there so that it's waterproof. Hard to believe that this is one entire piece of uh, stone. There are no joints here, no seams. This piece was uh, cut out of an entire slab, fabricated in the shop, the edge detail applied, polished, and they brought it and installed it in one piece, and it is stunning. This stone will be here, uh, I'm certain, another 111 years and perhaps longer. The nice part is that it's authentic to the home, it's durable, it's sustainable, it's affordable, it's easy to care for, and the homeowner is going to love it. Unfortunately, the owner didn't have enough money to pay for wood French doors and side lights. So he had to opt for a sliding glass door, which was not something that you saw on homes at the turn of the last century. 
And I felt really bad about it because I wanted the home to look exactly as it did when we first drove up. And uh, one of our sponsors, Simpson Door Company, made it possible for us to provide a pair of French doors and side lights so that we could maintain the uh, antiquity uh, and the antique appearance of the house and uh, not change its architecture one iota. So we were real pleased with uh, Simpson's uh, assistance in the matter. The homeowners are just ecstatic. For me, the front door of this home is the proverbial jewel in the crown. It sets the tone of the home, but it also provides security, improved energy efficiency, comfort, and the all-important curb appeal. And speaking of security, this is one solid door. Be sure to join us next week at 1 o'clock right here on Cron 4 as we work to meet our deadline despite the weather and finish this beautiful renovation in time.